a documentary, an experimental documentary on the fourth, the fourth floor. Um, I'd say that I've been interested a lot in ideas about cartography or mapping and the tension between the ways in which we map ourselves for ourselves within the Caribbean and the ways in which other people map us. And so there's a distinct sort of tension between this work and the other work. <clears throat> Thinking about ideas about home and belonging and um, I, tr I try to create in this, I guess, kind of uh, installation work this very sort of perfectly manicured rendition of what the Caribbean is and this attempt at rendering it um, as this um, one Caribbean space that's understood and seen as one space. The other piece kind of re relates to that in a way and it's looking at how Caribbean migrants are moving within the Southern Caribbean and the ways in which they're trying to locate themselves and the kinds of tensions that are coming out of that current movement. So it's tracking interregional movement of Caribbean nationals within the context of this attempt for 14 of these islands to come together as an economic unit. Um, everything is reverberating. <laughs> I'm so congested. Um, the title of the piece is a parody on a, a logo taken or a slogan taken from the Barbados Board of Tourism's um, advertising kind of phrase that says, just beyond your imagination. <clears throat> and I sort of take a play on that, saying, call it just beyond, beyond my imagination, the way in which a lot of the space is becoming very inaccessible to local people in the region, unaffordable, um, physically inaccessible. And also, what happens when there's such an immense foreign presence all the time, everything you uh, eat, you read, you wear, um, and you see on television, and a lot of what you listen to is imported from other spaces. And just questioning how that impacts on the ways in which we understand ourselves when we're constantly reflected in the eyes of someone else doing the rendering. Um, the other work is completely, I guess, in opposition to that. And the tension is that there are people within the Caribbean who are using their own voice to speak about the migrant experience. And it's interesting to me to see that these are Caribbean people moving within the region. They're not. Um, like within the EU, there's a sort of a tension maybe between Turkish Muslims moving into Germany. Whereas in the Caribbean, it's very different because we all have a history of a migrant um, experience and you know, we're, there's a similar kind of colonial history. So I find it interesting that there's some um, xenophobia, fears being expressed about the current movement of people within the region. And so I felt in a lot of the work I've done before, where there's uh, pieces thinking about constant migration, the constant back and forth of Caribbean people moving. In this case, I wanted to have um, the Caribbean people speaking themselves about their, their movement. Um, I actually think that's all I can say for the moment. I'm not feeling very well. I can't hear myself. I don't know if there's any um, questions about anything. Which is your other piece? The other piece is on the fourth floor. It's in a black box and it's called On the Map, okay. and it's, I call it an experimental documentary because it's combining <clears throat> sort of talking heads with more lyrical kinds of interjections, and then there are other people, aside from the migrants who are speaking, who are trying to offer a different perspective on the integrated movement within the Caribbean. So there's a, a philosopher, there's um, a playwright, and a musician, and a mass man, who are trying to speak about ideas of difference instead of speaking about the, these relationships in binary terms which we've really inherited from a colonial understanding of ourselves and to sort of speak about how can we think about this, you know, sort of debunking the myth of a unified Caribbean space and then how can we begin to think about um, experiencing this integrated movement that's happening right now which is quite significant in the region's history and the way in which it's being told to us at the state level is that it's, you know, we're just this one integrated space, but it's really functioning for professionals in the business class to be able to move personnel very easily throughout the region. And the social kinds of issues are not being addressed adequately. So the original sort of integrationists in the Caribbean would have been like the hucksters and the market people and people at the lower ends of the socioeconomic ladder who were moving freely within the region. <clears throat> when we were colonies, we were able to do that. And interestingly enough, when we became independent, 
the walls went up between the territories and it became much more difficult to move. And now we're sort of trying to do this integrative movement, but it's only working for some people. And so I'm questioning um, how is it that some of the people that really were the original integrationists and the people at the lower end of the socioeconomic ladder are not able to access this supposedly integrative space. And so it seems to me that a lot of spaces in the region are becoming inaccessible. I guess in the way we think about ourselves and in the way that we don't have the power to access the space. And it's partly in connection, I think, to this kind of space that we're creating for, for tourists and the way in which we map ourselves for people that are from somewhere else versus thinking about what we need to do within, within the region for ourselves. And so I think that there's a, uh, a tension between the works that's trying to address some of those issues. And, uh, well, it's, I've actually just finished it, and it's, this is the first place that it's been shown. Um, and I'm just currently talking to some spaces about the possibility of showing it somewhere else. I'm, particularly interested in showing it in the region, um, even though it's, you know, in comparison to the, you know, the market or the, the numbers of people you can get in the US and the UK, I'm particularly interested in showing it in the region to use it as a platform to discuss some of these issues. Um, and I suppose one of the obvious spaces for it, as well as a more academic kind of space, is there's now these huge diasporic populations and they're speaking about migration studies and diasporic studies and Caribbean studies. And so I'm, I guess interested in interfacing with that space as well. Do you find yourself in these places talking or being yeah. part of the conversation literally? Yes, yeah. So screening the film and speaking about it. Um, I did that as a work in progress. I've been working on it for the last two years and did that as a work in progress about a year ago, uh, which was a very, you know, worthwhile kind of exercise. Frightening at the same time because it was a work in progress sort of exposing yourself before you're completely ready, but um, yeah, so it's just really been finished and shown here. And I suppose the obvious thing in film festivals and that kind of thing is, is where it will go. Can you say something about the um, theater, about the, the dog's clock thing, because we've seen the bar in the set Yeah, there's, I mean, something yeah, there, Barbados is, is interested in sort of promoting itself as like one of the golfing centers of the world. So we currently have about seven golf courses. I mean, you have to imagine this is an island that's 14 by 21 miles. Uh, this is not exactly geographically correct. There are about 20 countries I'm representing here that have 90 golf courses on them at this point, I'm counting. And the largest country, Cuba, only has two. And, um, you know, what's happening in Barbados is there are these spaces that are being developed almost the entire south and west coast is completely inaccessible. You can't see the sea when you drive by on the coast because there's just concrete hotels and, you know, developments. Um, and they're selling it, I mean, there are these condominiums that are now selling at 16 million US dollars. And they're selling, you know, very quickly without any trouble at all. And so when I, you know, I drive into some of the, I went into a golf course to get, you know, the pin, which is what they call the flat hole. Um, and it's a very bizarre space because there's no sign of life. There are these huge mansions, you know, with beautiful gardens. And the only sign of, you know, anything there are people that are working, um, maids and gardeners. And, you know, one of the things that Chris mentioned last night is, you know, the, does this space serve our interest, or are we just supposed to work there, you know, in a, to, to serve there in a particular way? And they're very sterile kinds of spaces that are being created. Um, and of course, there's, you know, economic well-being that's, that's connected to it. But I guess the concern is it's not being balanced. Um, and this is a, a way in which we're seeing ourselves as becoming more developed and evolved. And so it's, the sterility of this is quite frightening. I mean, it's, it's I guess it's, with, you know, consciously a very reductive, um, sterile, kind of frightening space, you know, like the Truman Show, you know, like that, that film, the Truman Show. Um, yeah, so I guess I was using that as something to piggyback on because that's something that we're really trying to push in our developmental sort of model. <clears throat> Those kinds of spaces are being created here in the U.S. and Florida. Yes. And maybe in California, but I know for sure in Florida the same idea of a gated community on a golf course and nobody right. gets in or out. 
exactly. the purchase of expensive homes. Right. And I suppose it's a way of people that use it feel that they're close to nature. Mm -hmm. But what we have now are spaces that are being, like there's four seasons being built, and they've just taken down thousands of trees. And their argument is that they, they're planting 20,000 to replant, but they're completely altering the natural landscape to create a space that they want to inhabit and they want to sell. Um, you know, and these places are rented at 7,000 US dollars a day. I and mean, these are very inaccessible spaces. And so I think that there's clearly a tension that's developing between the local community and the expatriate community about control of those spaces. And, you know, how, you know, I mean, I'm inheriting a very different, my children are inheriting a very different space than the one in which I grew up in. And it's one that's increasingly limited access to. And I find this very disconcerting.